A garage full of decomposing bodies, stained casket pillows, loved ones mixed up at funerals. The horror stories emerged after the state shut down the Swanson Funeral Home in Flint just last month. Yeah, since then, many families have been demanding answers, so we're digging deeper to find them. Seven investigator Heather Catalo has been poring over complaints about this funeral home that goes back several years. Disturbing complaints about employees working on bodies without protective gear and forged death certificates date all the way back to 2012. Despite these dozens of complaints, it took the state five years to shut Swanson Funeral Home down. We deserve to know. We deserve to know what happened. Patricia Williams does not believe the ashes she received from Swanson Funeral Home in Flint were from her mother. You stand by your loved one in even in death, you want to make sure that things are done right and we feel like we failed her. After a long battle with cancer, 73-year-old Myrna Duffer passed away on January 7, 2012. Patricia says her mother's hospice caregivers recommended Swanson's because they promised a quick turnaround for cremation. But Patricia says when she started calling the funeral home nearly a week after her mom's death, she could not get a straight answer about whether the body had already been sent to Tri-County Cremation Services or not. She was not there. They couldn't find her at the funeral home. Patricia says the crematorium didn't know either. After days of waiting for answers, Patricia and her dad, retired Detroit police officer Robert Duffer, went to Swanson's in person, hoping to talk to the owner, O'Neill Swanson II. They wanted to know where was Myrna. They shuffled us in the back room so we wouldn't make too much noise. After an hour and a half in the back room, we started pounding on the door saying, hey, let us out of here. Something's not right. You could smell the stench of the bodies. There were white pillows laying around with body fluid on them. The carpet was all ripped up. There were cockroaches crawling up and down the wall. And at that point, we knew we made a horrible mistake. 17 days after Myrna's death, the family finally received some ashes from Swanson's. This is the unmarked bag we picked up. The ashes were in this white bag uh, and had no identification on them. Inside the bag was a plastic bag with ashes with a bread tie. That's when my dad really had a fit. We knew then we didn't have that anymore, so. Patricia and Robert say they called the police, the governor, the Genesee County Prosecutor's Office, and Michigan's Department of Licensing and Regulatory Affairs, known as LARA. Do you think the state should have done more? The state should have closed them down or investigated. There's so many unanswered questions. It's not only us. It's not only our family. It's not only my mom. Who knows who these people buried? Who knows who they put in a crematory. Lara did not take regulatory action on the Duffer family's complaint, but in 2012, several other complaints started coming in to Lara's Michigan Occupational Safety and Health Administration, or MIOSHA. The complaints were about everything from people working on bodies with no protective gear to improper storage facilities for human remains. MIOSHA inspected Swanson's six times since June of 2012. They issued 16 citations and five find them $38,100. At the same time that Myosha was investigating, other inspectors from Lara were looking into allegations that Swanson's was forging doctor signatures on death certificates. O'Neill Swanson II and the funeral home were fined $10,000 for that. But Swanson's was allowed to stay open even after getting this complaint in September 2015 that alleged O'Neill Swanson II, quote, runs a scam on people by holding bodies at the funeral home garage until they rot away. Then he rents a U-Haul and loads them all up and transfers them to another location to continue to rot away until he, quote, decided to cremate. Finally, just last month, the state shut Swanson's down. State officials said they again found decomposing bodies in a maggot-infested garage that had been there for months. Is Mr. Swanson here? We tried contacting O'Neill Swanson II at his West Bloomfield home, but he has not responded to our requests for answers. O'Neill's father, also named O'Neill Swanson, owns Swanson Funeral Homes in Detroit and Pontiac and says he has no legal connection to the Flint location. As for the Duffers, they want some justice for Myrna. I think that they should not be able to 
take human bodies and desecrate them and do what they want with them without following the rules of law. In addition to this ongoing state probe into health code and licensing violations, there is now another investigation underway. The Genesee County Sheriff and Prosecutor, as well as the Michigan Attorney General, are looking into whether criminal charges can be pursued. I'm Heather Catalo. 7 Action News. Thank you so much, Heather. Now, because the state is still investigating those complaints, they could not answer our specific questions about why it took so long to shut the funeral home down. We do have a detailed explanation of the investigation process on WXYZ.com, as well as instructions on how to file a complaint against a funeral home. Stephen? One by 